Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at phone numbers in a Ruby on Rails application. This is going to be pretty simple. It's kind of easy to mess up if you don't think about it too hard, uh, but eventually you'll probably come across why these edge cases are kind of a pain. So with phone numbers, you have a couple different ways you can approach this. You can enforce a strict format, like maybe you really like having parentheses around your area code or something, uh, or you can just say they only need to be numbers. Depending on how you do it, if it's very strict, it becomes very annoying for the end user trying to guess how to input their phone number. Uh, and if it's really uh, open, like this one right here, I can put in a plus one with the parentheses and the dashes. Users might be a little frustrated when they see that converted into the standardized format that your application uses. So in this case, it takes the uh, plus one, puts it at the front here, gets rid of the parentheses, gets rid of the hyphens and the spaces. That said, for me personally, I prefer this because it's standardized in your application. It's really just checking to see if the user put in a valid phone number. If I just put in the word password here, you'll see that's not a valid phone number. If I just put in one, two, three with the word password, that probably also isn't a valid phone number. But I can put in whatever I would like in here and it'll be able to figure it out uh, that this is probably a valid phone number. So. To me, this makes a lot more sense. And if the user then sees that this is incorrect, they can always go back and edit their profile. So to be doing this, we're gonna be using a phone field and we're also gonna be using a phone lib, which is a gem that's gonna make this super easy to set up. So to get started, let's go ahead and let's make a new Rails project. We'll start with a Rails new video and then we'll CD into it and we'll run our code dot to open this up in VS Code. So now that we're open, uh, we're gonna be adding phone lib and device. The reason why we're adding uh, oops, bundle add device and phone lib. Reason why we're adding device is because if I don't cover this, someone's going to inevitably leave the comment asking how to add this to their user accounts, which is a little harder than just generating a migration, of course. So we're just going to cover it that way. Uh, it won't take that much time at all. So we're going to start by adding those. We can then do a Rails G device colon install command to install device. We can then do a Rails G device user command to generate our user accounts. We can then uh, generate our migration. We'll say Rails G migration, add phone number to users. We'll say phone underscore number is of type string. Using a string here just because of all the parentheses and stuff people might add. Uh, and it allows us to store it in the way that the user expected. So once we have that, we can then go ahead and do a Rails DB colon migrate command. And once that's done, we can then go ahead and do our Rails G device colon views command to generate all of our front end stuff. And then because we're adding an extra parameter, we have to do a Rails G device colon controllers for the users to generate our uh, users controllers. Let's go ahead and let's come over into our config, our routes.rb. And before I forget, uh, well, let's grab this first. We'll grab the comma here. So after the users, Right here, we're going to do a comma for our controllers. This is going to be for the registrations controller. We want this to be user slash registrations, which is going to correlate to app controllers users folder and the registrations controller right there. So the other thing we want to do is just give ourselves a homepage. We'll say Rails G controller pages home just so that we can have that as well to work with. Then let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S because we're largely done here. Now there's a bunch of config for the phone lib gem that you can do, like set the default country. In this case, it's set to, uh, I think one. Um, but if you didn't have it set, oops, well, I guess I can't tell you now. Uh, if you didn't have it set, you'll probably get something with this area code uh, where it'll set it to like Brazil. So you'll have two leading fives here. It'll be plus five, five, and then five, five, five. Uh, so if you do want to set any of this stuff, it's pretty easy to do. Just come into your config, your initializers, right click new file, phone lib dot RB. And then in the phone lib dot RB file, you can paste this in, change this to whatever default country you would like, for example, and then stop and start your server. And this will work as you expect it to. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other configs you can put in here, like uh, the vanity conversion is really nice. So if they put in a number like 800 call now, it'll automatically convert that to uh, you know, normal people phone numbers uh, because people haven't used the, uh, the uh, <laughs> texting numbers uh, in a while now, whatever that's called. Uh, so yeah, your, your Nokia memes probably won't have a lot of power in most applications, so it's better to just convert it to uh, a phone number people can actually call. But okay, now that we have that, 
uh, we can go ahead and come into our controllers and our users and our registrations controller. So in our registrations controller, if we want people to be able to use their phone numbers when they create an account, make sure you uncomment this create action. If you want them to also be able to update their phone numbers after they make an account, come here and uncomment this update action. Those are going to correlate to this section down here in the protected that we're going to uncomment. It's going to be the configure sign up params, again, for signing up and the account update if you're updating your account. It's pretty self-explanatory once you see it, but if you don't know how to like get to this point in the code, uh, this is a big black box. But now you have your phone numbers uh, sanitized. You can also add something else in here if you wanna add like a username, you just do a comma and then put in that. Make sure you generate your migration. And then after you have that, that's your backend handle, you now need to go into your views, your device, and your registrations. And then in our case, I'm just gonna do this for the edit, uh, but you can do the same thing for the uh, account creation. You're gonna come into the edit file right below the uh, email confirmation right here and above the passwords, just put in your extra field. You don't have to put it here. I just like putting it here because it, it looks a little bit better. And then once that's done, we can come into our pages and our homepage because now we're pretty much done with the device setup. So in our homepage, we're just real quick gonna say if the user is signed in, else end. So if the user signed in, what we wanna do is say they are logged in as the current user. We then want to say, here's your phone number. So just paste in real quick, uh, dot phone underscore number. And then this should hopefully close itself. Uh, and then the last, two things you want to do are for the edit profile link which is your edit user registration path and then your sign out button which because we're using rail 7 needs to have the data turbo method delete uh, otherwise your logout button might not work as you expect it to uh, and then finally if you're not logged in already we'll just say you're not logged in we'll give you a link to sign up and a link to sign in just like that and that's pretty much your homepage done so now we can come over here and we can refresh and oops, you'll see we're riding Ruby on Rails, which means I forgot to change the root of our application. So let's come into our config and our routes.rb. And in here, let's set the root to be the pages controller home action. Come over, oops, come over here and refresh. In 300 videos, I don't think I've clicked that button once, and now I've managed to click it twice in one video. Fantastic. Uh, we can now sign up. I'll say dean at example.com with the password of password. Sign up. And now we're in the edit user account page, uh, but of course we can come back to the root. Uh, so if we're in the root, uh, we will see we don't have a phone number to begin with because we're not requiring it. So uh, we don't have to enter it when we sign up. Uh, but if we want to edit this, if we come in here and edit this, we'll say, I don't know, like one, two, three, four, five. Come down here and type password. You'll see that's allowed. What's more interesting, if we come in here and we just type some other nonsense, this will also be allowed. The reason is we've set up the ability to store this data, but we're not like sanitizing it at all. So we're not telling the application what a good phone number is and what a bad phone number is. And that's where phone lib is gonna come in. So for this, let's come into our models and our user.rb. And in our user.rb real quick, we're just going to add a couple things. So we're gonna say this needs to, oops, let me come down here. This needs to validate the phone number. The phone number uh, right here after with a comma, can have a possible of true. So this is where you're changing it from a uh, like hard-coded, uh, it has to match this format style to something where you're saying, if this phone number is possible or conceivable, like there's an area code or a, a country code that matches here or the parentheses would make sense if they were removed, then we're going to allow it. We also allow blank because we're, you know, ensuring that we can uh, not, that we're not required to use this uh, during the sign up. And then the other thing we can do is we can create a little helper method where we say, here's your formatted phone number. For this, we do a phone equals phone lib dot parse phone number. And then here you have a whole bunch of different options for what you can call. I come over here and I search for uh, formatted maybe. Uh, right here you can see the different uh, options. So you have your international, national, area code, local number, extension, etc. So. Whatever you decide to use here, it, you're probably just gonna have to mess with these. You can change these just by changing it right here to like full international, whatever you wanna do. In my case, I'm using the full E164, which is whatever spec for phone numbers. Uh, and then you can come over here and refresh. And now if we try to edit, we'll do a password. We'll just add like, I don't know, ASD at the end here. Click update, we'll see the phone number is invalid. And now if we change this to 
like uh, one, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll do the plus one with the parentheses around this and the hyphen between these. We can now press update and you'll see this is now following that same formatting. You can come in here and we can get rid of the uh, spacing and the hyphens just like this. Click uh, password. You'll see that also gets preserved because we're not calling the formatted phone number. If we want to force the formatting here to make sure it matches, all we do is we come into our homepage and instead of doing phone number, we call this formatted phone number, which is going to do this formatting. Now we can come over here and refresh. You'll see our parentheses are gone. It's just plus one plus the phone number. We can come in here and we can, you know, put in our spaces again, whatever we want to do. And it's still going to enforce that formatting. So that's sort of uh, every permutation I can really think of off the top of my head where you have different scenarios that you want to do. Uh, hopefully this was interesting and helpful. Uh, try to keep it short and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.